Hello everyone and welcome back to the Great Book of Grudges. My name is Nathan and we're back with another Total War Warhammer video. Total War Warhammer 3's announcement was rather brief to most. We were receiving a bunch of information, but not as much as people would have hoped. However, this is because some other news outlets were given some information to drop themselves. Not long ago, we covered information through a PC Gamer article regarding the map of Total War Warhammer 3. But now we have some information through an article with IGN regarding the plot of the game itself. It states, and I quote, as for the new campaign, Sega says players will be tasked with saving or exploiting the power of a dying god. Each race offers a unique journey through the nightmarish chaos realm, culminating in an endgame that will determine the fate of the world. In all honesty, this is extremely curious to myself. Saving or exploiting a dying god sounds like a very interesting plot point. Generally, the main form of gods dying out is losing all their worshippers, as worship is usually the main form of how gods in the Warhammer Fantasy universe get their sources of power. Though, of course, they can be killed outright. Some gods have been known to slay other gods, and so on. In lore, as far as I know at the moment, there are no active dying gods. They're either dead or very weakened, but not dying. Unless, of course, they mean it's a god of ancient days, which is not receiving much worship and is close to death at that point. Even then, going back into the lore, it's quite difficult to just pinpoint what god this could be. I've seen some speculation online that this could be Belakor, but you have to take into account that Belakor is a demon prince, not a god. There is, of course, conflicting information, as the Steam page itself says, the world stands on a precipice. A single push will plunge it into cataclysm, and there is one who schemes to achieve just that, an ancient figure who desires nothing less than to wield supreme power. That could indeed be Belakor, as we know in lore he wants to become a Chaos God himself. Still, going back to the quote in the IGN article, saving or exploiting the power of a dying god. We know that the races in the base game for Warhammer 3 are the Demons of Chaos, Cafe, and Kislev, so in theory, the Chaos Gods would be the ones to exploit this dying god, and likely the Kislevites and Cafeans would be the ones trying to save it. Still, I'm having a little bit of trouble trying to figure this out. There is a possibility that this god being referred to is Arianka, one of the Chaos Gods of Lore. She is the goddess of discipline, either military or maternal, a very old god in lore which was rarely really seen. The gods of lore, or chaos gods of lore as they're often referred to, were introduced but never really expanded upon too much. However, Arianka herself did get expanded lore as time went on for a short period of time and it is said that she lies in a crystal coffin hidden somewhere in the Old World, which is being rumoured to be under Prague, the Kislevite city which seems to get sacked over and over. While her lord does tie her a little bit to the god Malal, later known as Malice, she is not completely tied to him, meaning that she is still indeed canon. While she is known as a Chaos God, Arianka seems to be the more... Good aligned in a sense? The gods of lore were known to make battle against the gods of chaos and vice versa, and it seems like an obvious choice of the chaos gods wanting to take advantage and exploit a chaos god of lore if it's weakened or trapped, just like Arianka is. So we've already got one part of a possible plot. Now why would Cafe and Kislev want to go into her defense? It is theorized by the fanbase that the Kislevites who wield ice magic draw their power from Arianka. This is in reference to some lore from way back in the day, which is, well, pretty outdated if we can be honest, but could still possibly remain canon. We know of Cafeans being able to use a very similar form of ice magic, which could mean that ice magic is directly linked to Arianka. 
If that is the case, and the magic itself is so powerful, they would naturally go to the defense of Aryanka in an effort to protect her. Of course, this is going way deep into lore and speculation, but that also seems like a very possible plot point. The ancient figure mentioned on the Steam page could be acting on his own accord, and I honestly believe that this ancient figure could be Malal. Okay, before you jump down to the comments, just hear me out one second, yeah? Malal stopped being mentioned in the lore a long time ago. There was a lawsuit regarding the character, his demons, and so on. However, he was then renamed to Malice to continue to be able to use him. It has been a long few years since we saw anything relating to Malice, yet he has been mentioned again in recent days, not in Warhammer Fantasy or Age of Sigma, but in a universe that was confirmed tied to that of Warhammer Fantasy, Warhammer 40,000. During the Cadia campaign in Warhammer 8th edition, which was not that long ago, almost about a year or so, a warband known as the Sons of Malice appeared for a small amount of time. That is a Chaos warband directly linked to Malal slash Malice. So if Malice is once again considered canon, well, he could be canon once again here too. Take into account the following, an ancient figure who desires nothing less than to wield supreme power, and a single push will plunge the world into cataclysm. Malal himself is the god of destruction, indiscriminate to anything in the mortal and immortal realms. And since he is directly linked to Arianka, considering that the last time both were mentioned in lore, he had sent a champion to go and kill her, this could indeed be a possibility. Again, very much of a tinfoil hat. We also have to take into account that very old lore like this can indeed be brought back. Nekoho the Doubter is a perfect example of this, a god that was introduced to replace Malal originally, which was then long forgotten, but then got reintroduced into the lore into Age of Sigmar. Yes, I am aware that I'm pulling at very fine strings here, but if we take into account that Cafe was confirmed for Total War Warhammer 3, nothing's really out of the question anymore. Their announcement and confirmation opens up a breath of new possibilities. What do you guys think regarding this, especially given the new information that we've received from the IGN article? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and let's start a bit of a discussion. I'm really curious to see what you guys think, considering that the information provided to us isn't really too much that we can work with. Theory crafting will be very common for the time being, yet it's always kind of fun to get the community involved. But with that, my friends, we've come to the end of our video. Thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, might I suggest giving the video a like, or even subscribing to the channel, as it really does help us out. In the description section below are various links to different social media platforms such as Facebook, Instagram and Discord. Also in the description section is an affiliate link with Element Games where you could buy loads of hobby based products, not just Warhammer, for 10-25% to off. Making a purchase using that link and also our special code which is also in the description supports the channel at no extra cost to you, which we think is rather cool. A big thank you to our patrons, your support means the world to us, it's amazing that people want to help a small channel like us grow and get to our higher level of content. A big thank you to Gibraltar LUSC, Ryan Birch, Andrew Prince and Okro for subscribing to us at our fame level, you guys are super cool. And a big thank you to Edward Yule, VS Fasan, Aaron Whitman and Shaggy for subscribing to us at our king level, honestly we can't thank you all enough. And lastly, a big thank you to all of you for liking, sharing and commenting on these videos. Honestly, it's because of you guys that the channel has been growing at such a great pace lately, so we can't thank you all enough. But with that my friends, thank you so much for watching once again, and we shall see you all again very very soon. Have a good day.